Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. So today's video is a quick little explainer on a clever fixture to grind parts, uh, to grind square parts, uh, s square to, you know, arc second accuracy um, in sort of a mass production setting. So the background for this is, uh, some of you may have seen the interview I did with Mel Liebers um, that I recently posted uh, last summer. Uh, in that, he describes a fixture that they used to grind the stator for the blockhead uh, 4B uh, air bearing spindle. And that's an air bearing spindle just like this one here, but it has a square body. Um, some of you may be familiar with it. And because of, you know, the precision of these things, we want that square body to be, you know, absolutely square, a reference, um, you know, on par with the accuracy of the spindle itself. But how do you make uh, the square body, you know, that square in any, you know, reasonable cost-effective manner? So he describes a fixture um, in, in that interview, and I got some comments asking, you know, what would I didn't quite follow, what did he mean by that, what, what's he talking about there? And going back and listening to it myself, I honestly couldn't figure it out either. I, I didn't pick it up at the time, and it was, I was having a hard time visualizing what it was he was describing. Luckily, Byron from Professional Instruments sent me some info on it, and I sort of figured out how it was working. And what I've made here today is a model to demonstrate the principle. As is obvious, this is 3D printed, so this is not a, this is not an actual thing you could put on a grinder and you know do this work with. But it demonstrates the principle. You could machine one of these out of metal and, and use it. Uh, but for reasons we'll get into also, you couldn't use this particular spindle. Anyways, let's take a look at the working principle of this uh, square grinding fixture. So first things first, we want a way to index and you know rotate the part to pivot it between the uh, different indexes we want to go between. And the basis for that is an air bearing spindle. I've got this uh, 3R Biconic here. Uh, that's the one that I have, again, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, but the key point um, for the indexer that PI made is they used one of their, their blockheads, of course. And the interesting part about the uh, blockhead spindles in particular is you can individually supply the uh, air for the front and rear thrust bearings. So normally this is not done. There's just one airport, right? Because we just want the spindle to be on like this. But if you wanted to, you can have two ports, one that controls the front thrust bearing and half of the radial bearing, and another that controls the rear. If you turn on one but not the other, you can sort of imagine the consequence of that. Full pressure gets put on one thrust bearing, no pressure on the other, so it, you know, shifts, sort of pistons the uh, rotor and presses it, presses the non-pressurized side into the, the stator and locks it extremely well and with an extremely high force. The other consequence is because that the air you're using to lock it is feeding both the thrust bearing and half of the radial bearing, the radial bearing still gets supported as it's sort of moving into lock. So it's, it's an extremely non-influencing accurate lock. It's almost the most ideal lock you could imagine where you have your shaft, it pistons in and just not gonna move anymore. So we have a way to rotate and lock the spindle, but now we need a way to actually perform the indexing. So that's what's on the back here. Basically, what we've got is a plate bolted on the back of the rotor with um, eight of these. Here they're socket head cap screws, but uh, in the actual implementation, they're adjustable um, large radius diamond indicator tips. So where here we'll be contacting just on the end of the screw, imagine that's a nice generous radius on a polished diamond tip for an excellent contact. And what those tips bear against is this bar here. I can actually pop it out and just look at it. So Again, this is 3D printed, but imagine this was solid, you know, ground or lapped uh, steel bar. Uh, just to make it perform a little better, I've actually put in here a uh, 
a steel parallel, which I'm using just as a contact surface for these screws to bear on. And you'll notice on the ends of the bars, we've got these balls, and that's because it's sort of in a spherical center arrangement here where we have these flexures on either side with the mating sphere and just snap it in like that. Not put it in backwards, there we go. Snap it in like that, and you can sort of see where this is going. We've got a counterweight here. So this bar rotates on the spherical centers very well, very smoothly. Spherical centers, I should do a whole video on that uh, concept in and of itself, but we have a, a nice, smooth hysteresis free rotation. We've got these indicator tips here and a counterweight, so we can let this bar fall, and it brings two tips on either side into contact. This is our, you know, our index, right? We can then lock the spindle and do the grinding. So the, the, the disclaimer here is, you know, we are not getting the squareness inherently from anything in this setup. The initial calibration still needs to be done manually, where, you know, we take our our screwdriver or, or whatever, and we manually adjust, you know, these indicator tips to make sure that to level out and uh, get the get the squareness we want. We have to do that by hand first. I will interject in here though and mention that even though we do have to perform the initial calibration by hand, we don't need a squareness master to go off of here. So basically, the procedure for this would be. You know, so this is our top surface. We've ground that. The indicator tips are just where they're at. That's our first surface. The next thing to do would be rotate it 180 to the next position. And we want to get this, you know, perfectly parallel. So we can adjust our tips. And the way we uh, do, a, do a test grind here, uh, and the way we would inspect this, um, at least, the, you know, the way PI had it, is they had reed mics which are basically indicating micrometers on sort of a flexure stage so they can float like this. And so we measure the, uh, the size of the part here, we measure the size of the part here, and we can see any out of parallelism through that. And we make our adjustments until these two faces, you know, if we switch between the indexes, these are gonna be perfectly parallel, 180 degrees. Keep hitting this, let's get that out of there. We can then do the 90 degree sides uh, and the way we would inspect it, because these are parallel, of course, you can come on with a squareness comparator, uh, and it's self-checking by reversal. So you can look at the uh, reading on one side, then look at the reading on the other side, and dial in these screws until this has these two readings on either side exactly the same, and there is your 90 degree index. Then, you know, you come to the other, the other side, 180, and do the same thing, dial in this nice and parallel. So you do have to manually set it, but you don't need a master square in order to check it. But once you've done that, indexing is as simple as moving the, flipping the bar down, moving to the next position, and then letting go. One of the other things uh, that was talked about is we want this to be robust. How do we get this accuracy in sort of a wet grinding environment? There's coolant, there's grit everywhere. And these flexures actually help with that a little bit because we have these point contacts, so already pretty good from a uh, robustness standpoint because there's no, it's very difficult for grit to get underneath it since it's a single point. But as an additional, you know, security measure against that, we can just give this a poke and basically wipe off the, uh, the bar a little, just so if there is uh, any layer of grit or film or anything on the bar, we can just sort of give it a wipe and the points can sort of smear that away and come into good contact with the bar. So this is basically the idea, right? Flip it down, come to the next position, and there's your index. Some more reasons this is good. One, you know, we have a little more of a mechanical advantage from an uh, adjustment standpoint. You know, if we were just Let's look at the perhaps traditional idea where you have an indicator point here and you just have a contact bar on one side. So we can adjust our screw to adjust the position. Maybe we swing, swing that bar out of the way, go 
go to the next position and do, do it like that, all right? You could index in this way. A couple of the reasons this isn't good, one, when you adjust, you're only, you know, you're adjusting this displacement over this distance, over the radius of this plate here. So you don't have uh, as much uh, mechanical advantage as it were. With the two screws, when you adjust one side, the angle is actually over this length. So you get a little finer adjustment that way. But more importantly, and what the most clever thing about this design is, you know, if we do it in this manner where we just have a single point for indexing, any variations in this contact force, oh, there's the, there's the new compressor turning on. That's better. Yeah, so I, had, I got a compressor for the, uh, the apartment so I can run air bearings now. Pretty fun. It's quiet, but it's not quiet enough for, uh, to talk over, at least for a YouTube video, that is. Anyways, as I was saying, any variations in the contact force or the seating force that holds the tip against this uh, fixed plate here will introduce an error in the angular orientation. Because this is a point contact, you know, if you would change the force on that point, the Hertzian contact deformation is going to change and the spindle will rotate and you'll get an angular error. When you have a balanced driver like this and you have points on both sides, if everything's nice and symmetric, if I change this force, right, the force pushing the bar up into the screws, yeah, there will be a def deflection, but it will be even on both sides and it will net zero change in angle of the spindle. So this is a really clever concept, this balanced driver design. And it's, uh, it is in some ways related. Some of you may have seen the video I did on the, uh, the balanced driver for grinding between centers. It's actually the same, the same idea where we just, we want to have two, we want to basically add a degree of freedom to the uh, part that does the, the driving or the indexing, and then have two points of contact to the thing that we're driving. So we have a balanced force on both sides and don't introduce any spurious moments that we, uh, that could cause errors in, you know, here, grinding force variation here, angular uh, indexing. It's the, the, they're related concepts. And PI was really good about, you know, using those. So just as a demonstration, I had this square piece uh, connected to the, the front of the spindle just to have a surface to indicate off of. And even with this crappy 3D printed version, we can take a look at how well this, uh, this repeats. Um, we're not gonna actually inspect the squareness. Basically, I just wanna look at how well we can, how well we can, you know, move the bar away, make some movement and then put the bar back and, you know, see how it repeats. And you may have seen off in the corner there, but, I'll uh, move the camera so it's a little, little easier to see here. So we're sitting, you know, maybe at five millionths right now on the scale, getting closer to ten. And you know, I'll lift the lift the bar up. You can move the spindle to show it is not touching the bar anymore. Let it back down. And you know, that's repeating to certainly less than five micro inches. And this is a completely 3D printed setup with non-ideal contact points. Honestly, the biggest source of error here is probably my hand being near the 3D print and the heat radiating from me, expanding the plastic and causing movement in that regard. But you can get an idea just from this demo how repeatable this uh, setup could potentially be in a, in a grinding application. So. This is the uh, this is the idea behind the the uh, square indexing fixture that that Mel uh, mentioned in that interview. Basically, just went down this whole rabbit hole and uh, made this model because I was curious about how it worked and got a comment asking how it worked. Here you go. This is how it works. Um, put one together for yourself, but you'll have to buy a blockhead in order to do it. So, yeah. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Thanks for watching.